Hi everyone, my name is Ms. Hu and I am a physics teacher. In this video, I would like to show you how a ticker timer works. Now, what is a ticker timer? The ticker timer is a device which makes many dots per second on a piece of paper. How many dots per second depends on the frequency of the current that's being connected to the ticker timer. So in Malaysia, the frequency of the alternating current is 50 Hz, which means that it has 50 cycles per second. And that is the same frequency at which the ticker timer works, which means that if the frequency of the alternating current is 50 Hz, the frequency of the ticker timer is also 50 Hz. This means that the ticker timer makes 50 dots per second. So if you're wondering, okay, what do we mean by dots? I'll show you all in a moment. So if you're wondering, why does the frequency of the ticker timer follow the frequency of the alternating current? This is based on the principle of electromagnetism, which you will learn in that particular topic. But to give you a rough overview so that uh, those of you who are curious can find out more. Inside the ticker timer, as you can see, there's actually a coil, right? So this is the coil. Now this coil will get magnetized when current flows through it. Because we know that alternating current changes direction every half cycle, that means the magnetic poles of the coil also changes every half cycle. If you look here, it's not labeled, but this is actually a permanent magnet. So one side will be north, one side will be south. Uh, whether the top is north or the bottom is north, it doesn't matter. One will be north, one will be south. So what has the changing polarity got to do with anything? So you can see that there's a strip of metal that goes through the coil and between the uh, U-shaped magnets, right? So this iron strip will get the same magnetism as the coil. So because the magnetic poles of the coil changes every half cycle, the magnetic polarity of the iron strip also changes every half cycle. So remember I said that the permanent magnet has a fixed north and south. So this means that sometimes the strip will be attracted to north, sometimes it will be attracted to south, depending on the magnetic field of the coil. And that's how it controls this strip moving up and down. So as you can see, it says here AC, which is alternating current, 6 volts, 50 hertz. So we're going to make sure we have to connect this to the alternating current and 6 volts. Okay. So we're going to switch it on now. I want you to observe this iron strip and just make sure it's in frame. Okay, observe this iron strip. You can see that it is vibrating. So it's moving up and down. And the frequency of this ticker timer is 50 hertz, matching the frequency of the alternating current from our power supply. So, how does a ticker timer create dots on paper? You actually need to use something known as a ticker tape. And this is an example of a ticker tape. So you can see that this is actually just a strip of white paper. Of course, there's a huge roll here. Well, not that big, I've seen larger rolls. But it's a strip of white paper that we can fit through the ticker timer. So you can see in the ticker timer that there are uh, slots here, which is where we can slide the ticker tape through. Like so. But if you try to switch it on now, you find that there's not very many markings that's available to be seen. Now, some ticker tapes are not able to create a dot straight away, which is why we need to use carbon paper. So the carbon paper is designed also to work with the ticker tape. So how we work with the carbon paper is this. This is actually a round piece of carbon paper. We make sure the shiny side is down because that's where the ink is. And you can see on the ticker timer, there's also a little rod here. This upright rod is designed to hold the carbon paper, which as you can see already has a hole punched in it. I will eventually get it there. There we go. Okay. So that's how we fit the carbon paper. So what we do is when we fit the ticker tape through, the ticker tape must go under the carbon paper before going through the other side. And that's so that when the strip makes a marking, 
There's a very sharp needle at the bottom, by the way, in case you can't see it. Let me uh, show you closer. There's actually... It's here. There's actually a very sharp needle at the bottom of this iron strip, which is how it makes those dots. We've got to make sure that the ticker tape goes under the carbon paper, and the carbon paper must go under that sharp needle before you can see any markings made clearly on the ticker tape. So now you can see that the dots are a lot clearer due to the presence of the carbon paper. So a ticker timer is always used with ticker tape. Without a ticker tape, the ticker timer is useless. The purpose of this apparatus of the ticker timer with the ticker tape is to enable us to measure motion. From the experiment, we can measure displacement, velocity, as well as acceleration. Before we start the experiment, allow me first to show you how the ticker timer works with different types of motion. Now, if the ticker tape is not moving, obviously the dot is stationary, it's made on the same spot. If we move the tape slowly, we can see that the dots are very near each other. The faster we pull the tape, the larger the spacing between the dots. So understanding how the dots are formed with using the ticker timer enables us to be able to better interpret the results of any experiment that we do with the ticker timer and ticker tape. So here's the typical experiment that we would conduct in order to see how the ticker tape with the ticker timer is able to measure motion. So in this experiment, we will normally use a trolley and a ramp. So this is a typical trolley that you find in a physics lab. It's, uh, it's actually just a wooden block with wheels, but we call it a trolley because it is the object that's going to be used in this motion experiment. So before we get started the experiment, we first of course need to check does our trolley roll down the ramp easily? Because if it's not able to move, then there's no point doing the experiment because the trolley is not moving. So let's check. So of course, uh, for the perfect experiment, if possible, we would like the trolley to be able to move all the way down without hitting the sides of the ramp. But you know, we can't have everything perfect and there's always going to be some errors in our experiment. As long as the trolley is able to move down the ramp, we're good to go. So before we start the experiment, let's make sure the setup is complete first. So we already know we have the trolley and of course the ramp. And then check. Now the ticker timer must be set up. It has to be connected to the power supply. And as you can see, this has already been set up with the carbon paper. So it works. For the ticker tape, my suggestion is cut out the length of the ticker tape first before you start the experiment. Because if you leave it in the roll, as the trolley moves down, what's going to happen is you need the trolley to pull the ticker tape through the ticker timer. If the paper is stuck, it's going to hamper or stop the trolley from being able to measure the motion properly. So we're going to make sure we have the length of the ticker tape as long as the red. Try to get tape that is as long as or slightly longer than the ramp. Having a free piece of tape will ensure that the trolley will be able to move freely and will get the most accurate measurement of its motion. So once we already have our ticker tape prepared, we're going to put it through the ticker timer through the slots as we had seen earlier. It doesn't matter whether you're coming in from uh, one side or the other side. It doesn't matter as long as the ticker tape can move freely through the ticker timer. Yeah, and it moves freely. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick this end onto the back of the trolley so that as the trolley rolls down the ramp, it's able to pull the ticker tape together as it moves. How we're going to stick the tape on is by using old-fashioned cellophane tape. Now of course, make sure that when we stick the tape on, the trolley is at a position where it does not disturb the movement of the trolley so that as the trolley rolls down and pulls the ticker tape it doesn't get the tape doesn't get stuck in the wheels or something and can interfere with the motion okay and we 
are ready to begin our experiment. So place the trolley at the top of the ramp. Switch on the ticker timer first before we release the trolley. So switch it on. So we can see that the results observed on the ticker tape are exactly like how we observe the trolley move down the ramp. We do find that at the beginning of the tape, the spacing between the dots are very close together, which means the velocity is very much lower. But as we move along the tape, we find that the spacing between the dots increase gradually, which means the velocity also increases gradually. Now towards the end, we do find that the trolley kind of moved off center and that's why the dots are at the edge of the tape. But as long as the dots are visible, we will still be able to interpret the results from the ticker tape. So this is how we conduct a simple trolley experiment to study motion using the ticker timer with the ticker tape. I hope you have found this video helpful in seeing how an experiment can be conducted in the school lab with all these apparatus. In order to interpret the results from the ticker tape, to find out the value of the displacement, velocity, and acceleration, I'll do that in a separate video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Physics Rocks.